Welcome back everyone. I'm going to show you a little dry fly for small streams. And I decided to do this after a conversation with Leon Lynx. Um, he posted a, a parachute fly tied with a CDC, a CDC parachute and a foam post on social media. And um, I asked him a few questions about the fly and it, it came about how we mix CDC with uh, with other materials, and it reminded me of this fly that I tie when I fish small streams, um, which is a combination of CDC and hackle genetic hackle. It's a little bit different from the stuff we see every day. Um, you know, the, the flies that we that's that's pretty common at the moment are the parachute patterns with a CDC, one or two CDC wraps below the parachute and, and uh, we've been using that form for many years but the first time I saw it was way before we even started using it in South Africa, it was in the States um, way back, um, I think it was when I fished um, Montana um, back in 2010. Now this fly, that you know, I, I was looking for a fly that, that I can use on small streams it's a combination of cdc and hackle but where you actually combine the two two um, materials where you don't tie the two materials in individually you tie them in together um, that's not what i was looking for it came about this technique came about uh, when i try to find a fly that will sit flat on the water that will float nicely that will have a good footprint uh, that will imitate a mayfly and that is uh, CDC in it that will give it uh, life and nice movement and this is where the conversation ended with 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 Leon Lynx and I promised him to do a video on this pattern it's called the Messi Mayfly and it's a very it's 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 not a difficult fly to tie but you need to get the techniques right now I prefer to tie it with Coq de Leon and uh, I have tied it with uh, genetic hackle, whiting genetic hackle. When I tied with genetic hackle, I uh, the only reason why I would tie it with that is to get a different color uh, uh, color variation that I can't get in in cochlear perhaps. And um, the, if, when I tied with, with genetic hackle, I tied with a cape and not a saddle because the capes have a bigger variety of feathers where you can get the right length of fiber, different size size hackles. Now, I'm tying this on a grip 11011, which is a very light wire hook and ideal for small streams. I'm tying this one in a size 12, which is quite big. I do tie it in 14s and 16s, but it tends to, to get a little bit trickier when you go smaller and you will understand why as we go through the through the fly, uh, the tying sequence. And you start by covering the hook shank and I tied with a, a grip 80 thread. Um, we're going to combine or, or use quite a few techniques on which I've made um, some movies, uh, video videos on that I will link to the to this video as well. You we start by tying the tail, about eight, six to eight fibers from a Coq de Leon feather. Tie that on the hook shank. Don't go down the hook bend. You want this fly to be dead straight, this, this tail. And then I make one wrap underneath the, the tail just display those fibers out a little bit and go forward and you can trim those ends there it's a very lightweight fly so you don't want to add unnecessary wraps or unnecessary uh, uh, thread uh, uh, materials on it now you can see the tail display I'm just going to pull that into position a little bit there but that is the kind of effect you need on the tail and you go forward to the middle of the of the hook 
Now at this point you're going to tie in a piece of Antron yarn. And the Antron yarn, I use a, a grip Antron yarn, it's a, it's a um, in a grey colour because I'm tying kind of a, a blue dun my fly. Match the the Antron yarn colour. I've tied this in uh, like a um, pale morning dun, blue inked olive, all those sort of colours as well. I can remember the first first time I fished this was on the Soda Butte in I think it was the Soda Butte in um, uh, in Montana. No, it wasn't the Soda Butte. It was the Gallatin, and a very thin riffle water, and it was worked like a charm. Now, the Antron yarn you're going to tie on the inside of the hook. Fold it around the thread, and do that again. And pull it straight up to the hook shank. Secure it with one or two wraps. Must be on the inside of the hook. And then you just pull it through the... Through those wraps to about there. At this point you're going to pull that Antron yarn down want to make sure that I get all the fibers down. There. And cut the back end. Cut it at an angle so that it tapers. The reason for that is because it will help to taper the abdomen. You're going to tie that back end, that little bit, tie that in flat on the hook shank there. And take your thread back a little bit. Now the abdomen is tied with a, a goose by it. And I also have a CD, uh, um, uh, video on goose bites that I will link on just how to prepare the goose bites for tying abdomens. And I use uh, Egyptian geese, a goose bite from Egyptian geese. I'm a wing shooter, so I always harvest some feathers. They've got beautiful CDC. Tie that in at the back, all the way to the base of the tail. And take your thread forward to the Antron yarn, to about there. I'm going to wrap that Antron yarn, all that uh, uh, goose bite, around the hook shank to form an uh, abdomen. A very nice segmented abdomen. You'll see the colors in this uh, goose bite is very nice. It's a, like a lighter color on the inside. And it forms a beautiful rib on the abdomen. And they are quite long, so you can really, I mean, I'm tying on a size 12 hook here, that's, that's, that's quite a big hook for a goose bite abdomen. And you tie that off behind the Antron yarn. Make sure that's well secured before you remove the hackle pliers. Tie that off right there. And cut that. Now you'll see that there's a little bit of thread. Obviously, the thread that you use to tie it off is behind the antron yarn, and you want to cover that because the rest of the fly we're going to be tying in front of the antron yarn. So we're going to cover that little bit of thread, those few thread wraps, with a little bit of dabbing. And I use just use a grey antron dabbing to to cover that, you can just cover a very short piece of thread with antron dubbing and make a few wraps around that there and then in, in front of it as well.
it's well covered. And then you take your thread, just want to remove those few fibers there, and you take the thread to about the middle of the uh, hook shank between the, the, the Antron yarn and the eye of the hook. Now, the next step is to prepare the brush because we're going to tie the rest. It's a combination of uh, the, the, the thorax, wing case, and, and, and or, or thorax and wings. Um, or a combination of hackle and CDC, but you tie everything in at the same time. So we're going to make a little brush with that, and I'm going to zoom out and show you how to do that brush quickly. And then um, we'll zoom back in and finish the fly. The tools that you need for this little brush is a set of uh, Marc Petitjean's CDC clamps or clamps, magic tools, and you need one of one of these wider ones to 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 get the CDC in um, in the uh, narrower clamp, and then you need you actually need three clamps. But the set comes with two clamps only, so I use a normal paper clamp as the third. You need to combine CDC and, and hackle. Now, I'm just going to put these two aside for now. This you need to trap the CDC in. Now, I use, I use two CDC feathers on this fly. I don't think you need to use more. Um, one, uh, I'm using some of Giorgio Benucci's CDC. I was fortunate enough to meet him in 1997 at the um, Fly Tackle Dealer Show in Denver. Um, so you take the two feathers. There's a, there's a video on Mark Petitjean's tools and how I use them and I will I will link that um, it's it's a lot more detail than what I'm going to show you now you take these two feathers and you place them in this clamp and you pull them down to trap this trap the fibers on the one side and you grab first grab your scissors and you cut the excess on the sides get that out of the way and then you grab one of the bigger clamps, or the narrower clamps rather, trap that CDC in there and remove the other clamp. And there you have CDC trapped, the soft fibers trapped in the clamp and the stems exposed. And you go and you cut those stems away. I use long hair scissors. It works much easier than, than the shorter scissors. And that's what you have. Put that aside and you grab the other clamp and a cocktailion feather. Open that feather, grab it on the tip with your thumb and forefinger brush all the fibers backwards so they stand perpendicular to the Um, to the stem, cut that tip away, and grab those fibers in the clamp. Now you need to grab about the same amount as what you have CDC in the other clamp. And then you cut those fibers, or cut that stem away. And that is what you have. I always pull those fibers out a little bit because you need to grab them with the other clamp, with the third clamp. Now what you do is you put those two clamps next to each other. Now the one is bigger than the other so we're going to lift the one up a little bit. Grab the paper clamp in your one hand, bring these two clamps 
next to each other so that the material line up the hackle and the material line up hold them there close to, to each other and grab with the third clamp grab those materials and then you release the two uh, partition clamps or magic tools now you have in this you have a combination or a mix of CDC and uh, cocktail yarn fibers which will give you that when you put it in the brush and you spin it you'll get the CDC and the, and the fibers that spin and mix and that will when you wrap it around the hook you'll have the the, the, the core of the brush or the inside of the brush you'll have with CDC and the stiffer fibers will stick out past the CDC and when this fly lies on the water the stiffer fibers will help support it on the water while the CDC is giving it a little bit of life with more movement and so on so let's get back to the fly and then I'll show you how to do that brush and how to how to finish the fly you take your that brush now I've zoomed in everything looks okay um, and you you first need to get that antron yarn out of the way now I just use a normal paper clamp to to keep that out of the way just want to try and get that right here again there we go uh, split the thread and I use a split thread technique there's also a video that I'll link down below on um, different uh, dabbing and brush kind of techniques on the vise uh, split threads dabbing loops those sort of things and and um, I use split thread on this fly because you don't want to bulk the fly up if you use a loop then it's going to double the thread on this fly and you don't want that and it's going to just make it too bulky so I split the thread with a needle just get that there we go and you take your brush and brush material and you put that in the thread there it's a little bit long on the butt side so I'm going to move that a little bit in and you can follow the the video on the on the brush there to see more detail on the technique spin that bobbin you need to really wind that up because they've got a stiffer fiber and soft stiffer cocktail yarn and softer cdc and you need to spin everything into one brush and it, it, it um, uh, you need to be very careful because sometimes it can get a little, little bit messy to make my brushes too long so you need to cut some off in the front but let's just see how this comes out that's looking pretty good now the reason for tying the stop ending your thread in the middle is, is actually twofold one is sometimes these fibers grab the the antron yarn and start to spin it in the brush and that's it's just so difficult to unwind that the other reason is you've got a bare piece of thread there and you need to make you need to start it at the back so you take that bare piece of thread and wind backwards to the antron yarn and when you get to the point where you need to start your brush in your brush is right at that point and you start by making your wraps against each other and pull those fibers back make another wrap keep pulling those fibers back until you get well, let's do the front I'm going to make another one wrap and a last one and that is 
we're going to unwind the, the bobbin a little bit to, to try and remove some of those materials. want to get everything in place. Now the next step is to tie the Antron yarn off and it, this is exactly the same technique as what you would use when you tie a, um, a, a nymph and you tie a wing case on a nymph. Turn the mice around and take your thumb and forefinger and brush that material back and this is not a wing case this is the belly of the fly that you tie. The reason for the Antron yarn is to keep those materials flat because you want this fly to sit flat on the water. Antron yarn is there to keep that flat on the water to push those materials to the side that will leave that wing footprint on the water. And you just brush all of that aside, pull the Antron yarn over and tie it off right there cut that entry on away And tie the fly off. Form a nice small little head. Now while I'm doing this, what I always do before I tie these flies, I treat the hackle and the antron yarn with a dry fly floatant. Because it is very difficult to treat this fly with a floatant on the water, you tend to mess the whole fly up. Oh, it's it it just you don't get the effect that you want on the fly, you don't get the footprint that you want, you don't get the 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 um it just doesn't sit the way it's supposed to sit on the water and you want this fly to to open up it must it must um, uh, you know the, the, there's a lot of movement in this fly and you want it to open up and floatant will definitely kill all of that if you treat it on the water so there's the fly and then I always go in and cut some of the fibers out that will affect the way this fly sits on the water and those are generally right at the bottom of the fly and that is the, the messy mayfly so that's the, the fly I promised Leon Lynx I would tie and try this it was really developed for lightweight rods, thin water, small streams. Um, I haven't tried many other techniques or other patterns with this. I'm definitely going to look at some caddis patterns for this coming season. But it's a it's a very successful my fly pattern that I've uh, used. And you can see the, 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 the profile of this fly. You've got the wings on the side. You've got the my fly wings sitting there. You've got the wings on the water from the bottom and it sits very flat on the water. The, the, the Cock de Leon will help to stabilize the fly to keep it up on the surface while the CDC is there to add that little bit of bulk around the thorax, keep the fly dry and add some movement to that fly. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, please comment. I would like to know if you have any other ideas um, with this technique if you don't mind sharing them, please do that. I always like to read the comments. And thanks for watching.